Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. In the video 81, we saw how useful time series can be. It turns out that a lot of the work on time series assumes they are regular. In many cases, we need to convert them from irregular to regular. The best known example is probably the stock market. Shares are traded at irregular interval. We usually see a daily summary of the trading with values such as opening price, closing price, high of the day, low of the day, and volume of trade. This set of values now represent a regular daily time series. We may say the daily stock price is a daily time series, but we are still missing readings for every Saturday and Sundays, not to mention holidays. Doesn't that make it an irregular time series? It doesn't, but we need to remove the weekends and holidays from our calculations. Look at it as applying a calendar to it. For example, Panda's data frames support time series and include attributes such as week mask and holidays. It can also define a frequency such as business day frequency. Pandas has a lot of flexibility to accommodate virtually any requirements. In the stock market example, we were going from a higher frequency to a lower frequency. We could also take a high frequency regular time series and convert it to a lower frequency one. For example, if machine monitoring provides readings every millisecond, we can use these readings in real time to react to possible issues, but we may not need to keep it at that frequency when stored for historical analysis. We could, for example, convert from millisecond to second. Using a similar approach to stock market example, we could collect statistics on the time interval. If we collect, let's say, 10 values, such as first value, last value, min, max, second min, second max, average, and median, we'll still reduce the data size by a factor of 100. What if we want to go from a lower frequency to a higher one? What do we do when we need to fill in the gaps? The strategy depends on the type of data collected. If we have state information, we can assume that the state stays the same until it changes. The gaps are then filled with the last state value. Here are examples of state values. A door is open or closed. A traffic light goes from green to yellow to red. The CDC uses a four-level system for COVID-19 travel destinations. What if we are monitoring continuous values? These values could come from all sorts of sensors used in fields as varied as medicine or industrial equipment management. A few approaches could be taken. Let's start by assuming that there is only one missing value between the known values. This could be the case where we double the sampling interval. We could use a previous value, the next value, or average the two. The choice could represent best case, worst case, or average case scenario. We can generalize the average idea for higher frequency by using a linear formula to estimate the value. For example, if the temperature is 180 degrees and 15 minutes later it is 201, we could estimate missing 5-minute intervals as being 187 and 194. Instead of a linear equation, some cases could be better served by exponential equations like in the case of calculating the half-life of radioactive elements. It all depends on the characteristics of the sensor's reading. Both increasing or decreasing the frequency of time series have their challenges. You can lose information when aggregating, or you have issues filling in the gaps when increasing the frequency. Understanding the problem at hand is critical in deciding how to proceed. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science. And don't forget to subscribe.